corner. Wearing white coats with multi-color trim, he is fighting out of Tucumigo, Estado Guadico, Venezuela. He weighed in at 120 and three quarter pounds with a record of 21 wins, one loss and one draw. He has 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the WBA number one ranked junior featherweight contender. Introducing Yober Ortega. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the defending world champion of my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue, red, and yellow trunks, hailing from Miranda, Venezuela. With a weight of 121 pounds, his record includes 23 wins, only one defeat, 15 wins, coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the second defense of his title, please welcome the WBA Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, Antonio Cermeño. Once again, referee in charge, Armando Garcia, now to give instructions. para el título mundial ustedes son profesionales pero se comporten como el mismo obedezcan todo momento el que manda en el ring soy yo y el espectáculo son ustedes que mejor to go. This is a 12-round WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. That's the 122-pound limit. The principal is the champion Antonio Cermeño from Miranda in Venezuela and Yoba Ortega, also a Venezuelan, hailing from Turmero in Venezuela. Ortega, the challenger, comes in at 21-1-1, 14 KOs. The champ is 23-1 with 15 KOs. Champion in the blue multicolored trunks, blue, red, and yellow. And in the... Uh, White trunks, we have Yoba Ortega. First thing we notice immediately about Ortega is he's a southpaw, jabbing with the right hand. Semeno, his strengths are mobility. He's got a busy style. He's got a bit of height and reach advantage, and he's a terrific counter puncher. The southpaw is a typical southpaw. He's got that big left hand. Probably doesn't use the right enough. He's aggressive, and he's got a reputation for having a pretty good chin we'll find out in this fight for both fighters their first time in the United States of America this is round one again it's scheduled for 12 I'm Bob Sheridan you're watching King Vision this is a world title fight the WBA version of the junior featherweight division the 122 pound class the champion multicolored trunks with his back to you, now to the left of your screen, the challenger, your bear Ortega in the white trunks, trying to get aggressive. Ortega, as an amateur, piled up a record of 64 and 6. His last time out, he scored a fourth round KO over Ramon Guzman to win the Federal Latin title. That was in November, and also in November, Germania went 12 rounds to win a decision over Jesus Salud to retain his title. So both fellas off for a few months. One of the weaknesses on the champ, if he has any, is a lack of a one-punch type of power. And you'd have to say a bit of inexperience at the world-class levels. He's fought uh, basically all of his fights outside the United States, mostly in Venezuela. He traveled to Seoul, Korea once and lost to J1, that was Choi J1, by a decision, and you know what it's like trying to get a decision in Korea. It's next to impossible unless, of course, you're a Korean fighter. Anything close goes to the Koreans. So 
the champion again with his back to you. We're at the Miami Arena in the closing second now of round number one. Again, this is scheduled for 12. This is for the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World, the champion of multicolored trunks. The challenger, Jobert Ortega, in the white trunks with the writing on it and the Venezuelan flag on the sides of his trunks. The champion wearing the colors of the Venezuelan flag in the blue, yellow, and red. See, right now, Ortega has come to try and lift this, the southpaw. You notice uh, when we have the Lucia shot, you'll see that the front feet are continually getting stepped on by one fighter or the other. That's uh, normal for southpaws. Sometimes a right-handed fighter like Semenya with a little bit more experience than Ortega will take advantage of that, but uh, it seems as though Ortega is doing more of the stepping on, and you'll see that as we loosen that shot up just a bit. It's a real problem. The idea for the right-handed fighter is to get his front foot or his left foot on the outside of the right foot of uh, the southpaw fighter. Now watch this. This will show you. You'll see their feet getting tight. See that? Right on top of his toe. Again, he steps on his toe. And that can cause balance problems. So if you notice, this referee, Armando Garcia, is standing back a little bit further than normal because he knows, with the experience of refereeing, that if you stand too close, you miss the feet. And oftentimes you can call a knockdown when it's truly a slip or a trip is what really happens more than a slip. Right now it's Ortega that's making the fight here in round two. Kind of an even first round feeling each other out. And Ortega trying to get inside the punching power. They say that the book on him is that he lacks defense. He doesn't mind a guy coming in if he can land a shot. But he's got the reputation of not using that right hand enough. But he's got a powerful left. You see him digging with the left hand. Nice left hand landed that time by the southpaw Ortega and the challenger. This is round two. Again, it's scheduled for 12. These guys are both boxers, both from Venezuela. Neither fighter really taking command, although Ortega's having a pretty good second round here. Nice shot that time, a combination by Cermeño. Cermeño fought twice in 1995, defeating Wilfredo Vasquez to win the WBA 122-pound title. That was back in May. That fight took place in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. And then he defended his title for the first time against Jesus Salud in November of last year. This is his first fight in 96. You take a look at the ring record of... Ortega, you see that he fought three times, stopped all three opponents. So you wonder who the heavier puncher is. And the belly ends round two. Pretty good round for Ortega. Ortega coming in and watch uh, Cermino. Boom, he nails him in the body and nice left hook tries to follow it up and the referee says that's it, that's the end of the round. 
So Sermenio didn't have enough time for the three minutes to get it going. We're in Sermenio's corner. We're at the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida. I'm Bob Sheridan. You're watching King Vision. This is round three. The WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. Antonio Cermeño from Venezuela taking on fellow countryman Robert Ortega. Cermeño from Miranda in Venezuela and Ortega from Romero in Venezuela. The champ in the blue trunk, the challenger in the white trunk. See, the champ has a tendency to want to grab with that left hand and bang with the right, so he doesn't mind when Ortega ties him up with that. He comes from all kinds of angles, does Semenyo. He's getting warmed up pretty good now. He's throwing a lot more punches here in this round. I'm sure his corner got on him uh, in between. Uh, you people that are taking this in Spanish and uh, the various Latin countries uh, can understand better than I can, actually, what's going on in between rounds. But I know that all of you down in the Dominican Republic and certainly in Venezuela are enjoying this, and in Argentina, Brazil, and Panama, as well as Colombia. Glad that you can be with us tonight on King Vision. Some pretty good fighters in the United States are not uh, too up on junior featherweights, but you get guys like Orlando Canizales, Alfred Cote, Daniel Zaragoza, people of that nature. Hector Aceo Sanchez also ranked in the top ten from the Dominican Republic. So it's a pretty good division. And this fella in the blue trunks is a world champion of the WBA. Taking on a game South Foreign Countryman, Yobert Ortega. Round three, and what I have a dead even fight. I had Semenyo winning the first round and Ortega the second round. This one, Semenyo is uh, much more in control of the third than he was back in the second. But it's Ortega's willingness to stay right in front of him that is making this a fight. Both guys go to the body, both guys pounding, trying to throw uppercuts, trying to land a big shot. Neither guy is a one-punch uh, KO artist, although the last three fights that Ortega has won have all been via TKOs. His last time out against Ramon Guzman in the fourth round, previous to that, Jose Rincones in the seventh round, and then against Luis Ojeda when he won the Venezuelan 122-pound title in the ninth round of their fight last uh, April. Champ loads up a right hand, but it just grazes past the forehead of the challenger. The challenger in white, the champ in blue. Both guys show good movement. This is a tougher fight for these two individuals than what the crowd appreciates here because they both show a lot of trunk movement in there, make a difficult target for either man to get a flush punch on. You see the way Ortega dips at the waist, bends at the waist when he throws the straight lefts and straight right hands. See that right there? The bell ends, round three. A little bit of blood from the nose of Cermeño. All right, here we go. This is round four. Bob Sheridan here at the Miami Arena. This is the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. Antonio Cermeño against his fellow countryman, Yobert Ortega. And a fairly even fight to this point. I've got Semenyo winning number one and three, and Ortega winning number two. And let's see if Ortega tries to pick up the pace here a little bit in round number four. Again, the challenger in white, the champion in the multicolored trunks, primarily blue with yellow and red. With his back to you there, that's the champ. Challenger, nice shot of him there in the white trunks. Both guys a game. Neither uh, fighter has been hurt. 
Nobody's shaking. Nice right hand, just as I say. Nobody's shaking. He crushes a right hand to the temporal area of Ortega. One of the best shots in the fight. See if he can do that again. A nice right hand. Again, we pointed out earlier the problem with them walking on each other's feet, but that's common with a southpaw and a right-handed fighter. Certainly, southpaws are used to it because it happens to them almost every time they fight, except the unusual circumstance when you have two southpaws fighting, which you see every once in a while, but it is unusual. Since that big crushing right hand, Semenyo wants to load up, but he's staying inside. This is actually Ortega's fight. He'd be better off if he stayed back out and used his, you know, his busy style and his reach advantage. But what uh, Ortega's game plan and fight plan has to be is to come inside and smother that reach advantage, which is what he's attempting to do right here. But uh, in this round, he's getting beat to the punch inside. As I say that, he throws some more leather, but it's Semenyo uh, that is uh, really controlling the flow here because Semenyo comes in and out as he wishes. Ortega just continues to come forward because, again, it is his fight plan to fight this guy inside. And not a bad idea either, by the way. His corner of uh, Elizar Castillo, who's his trainer in, uh, here in Miami, Tudor Zabala Jr. and Roberto Casada, they've got the right idea on how to fight Semino. Semino dancing around to his left and then hooks with a kind of an overhand looping right hand that just grazes the nose of the challenger. Ortega stays right in his face. Continues to throw punches. Nothing slick about Ortega. He just stands right in front of you. What he needs to do is try to get some angles, but his corner has said, I want you to fight inside with this guy. It's your only shot. And I believe with the reach advantage that Cermeno has, that if he can execute the fight plan, he's got an opportunity here, as he showed in the second round. But he's getting beat to the punch right now as he comes in. The champ with the longer reach, superior boxing ability, apparently, is at this stage, is taking advantage of it. See him counter? Not landing anything, but doing a nice job counting. That time he lands, an uppercut and a shot to the face. Light, glancing blow as the bell is ready to sound here. Ending round four. Well, so far, the only shot of the fight is a looping right hand. Watch this. You'll see the guy in the blue trunks land it. Faint there, and boom, right there. That's the best punch of the fight so far. This is round five. Back to live action. Bob Sheridan here on King Vision. Coming to you from the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida. The great place for boxing history Miami is. And the fans have turned out. They love boxing here in Miami. This is a huge arena. And they've got a pretty good crowd on hand for this. This is the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. The 122-pound division. Antonio Cermeño in the multicolored trunks and in the white trunks, the challenger, Yobier Ortega. Both men hail from Venezuela. The Ortega trying to get a little bit busier, trying to throw the left hand behind that right. He loves to throw the left hand, but that's typical of the southpaw fighters. And I like, you know, the book on him was that he lacked a little defense. He's shown some nice defense in this fight, I think, contrary to what the book on him was. Talking about Ortega. See, he's fighting outside this time. This is probably where Semenyo's people would like him to fight the fight. He could just outbox Ortega all night out here. Wouldn't make for a classic show, but it would make for a nice, uh, simple win for Semenyo. Fight him out here, you see? He's definitely staying off him and letting Ortega come in. When he did that in the second round, Ortega was able to take some of the play away from him. You see, just jab, jab, jab. Now throw the right hand is what he's got to do. Slides down, getting the angles. He misses an awful lot of punches, does Semenyo. He throws a lot, but he misses a lot. 
Now he's taking the advantage, going with the left jab that goes over the shoulder, wild with the right uppercut. Again, he misses with the left uppercut. You see guys miss a lot of punches when they're busy. Both of them bouncing up on their toes, and more important, they have that nice trunk and head movement that uh, avoids a lot of shots. Semenyo more head hunting in this round, and Ortega trying to work the body a bit. Some of that may have to do with reach and height. There's the looping left again by Ortega. Ortega digs to the body, back to the body again. Bangs him behind the rib. Uppercut misses by Semenyo. This is a pretty good round now for Ortega. Ortega looking for the shot. He needs to come with an uppercut inside. Right in here. He's got the positioning on him. Right in here to come right with that. If he could come with the right hand with his body twisted the way it is, Semenyo wouldn't even see it. And Semenyo is so busy off to the left shoulder. See right here, right here. All he's going to do is twist his body in and come back and throw that right uppercut. And he can drop this guy. He doesn't see it, but somebody in this corner may see it. It's a lot easier when you're sitting out here to evaluate this than when you're in there to be able to execute it. But it would come from the blind side and it would be very, very effective. The bell ends round five. A pretty good Ortega round. This is round number six. It's scheduled for 12. Fairly even fight here. Antonio Salmeño in the multicolored trunks and in the white trunks, Jobert Ortega. Don't touch him from the country of Venezuela in South America. I had on my scorecard Semenyo winning a one and four, uh, one three and four actually, and Ortega winning two and five. This is round number six. Again, it's scheduled for 12. At stake, the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. Ortega continues to come forward. And back after the fourth round, I think the corner of Sermenio said, hey, don't let this guy pour in on you. Stay outside. Use your reach. Use your height. Take advantage of it. Keep this guy off you and try to outbox him. Well, it's unusual to point out that both in the second round and the fifth round when he fought out here, and my scorecard, I have him losing the rounds. So he's actually more effective when he fights inside. He scores more punches inside on Ortega. But maybe that's the way they want to box him for two or three rounds. Let's just uh, see how it uh, unfolds here. Because right now, it's Ortega that's forcing the fight. By the way, the rules here in the WBA, it's the 10-point must scoring system. Three judges score the fight. The three knockdown rule is in effect. There's no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop the fight. And a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round of the fight. So those are the rules under which it's being contested. Here the crowd getting on the fight as they don't like the idea of Mr. Manuel fighting outside. They like to see him come inside and make this more of a scrap. And Ortega forcing the fight, making it more of a scrap right now. See Semenyo doing the catching, and Ortega doing the chasing. Antonio Semenyo, the world champion. Both fellas fighting the, for the first time in the United States. But for Latin fighters to come to Miami, it's hardly a foreign country here anymore. The native language is definitely Spanish here. And what a great job the Spanish-speaking people have done in this city. They've done a beautiful job.
Champion tries to get his man back on the ropes and keep him there, but Ortega wants no part of sitting on the ropes. He waltzes off. And now the champ gets a little bit busier. This is a fairly even round. Tough to score. This is scheduled for World Championship 12 rounds. The WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. Bob Sheridan here on King Vision. Glad that you can be with us for a night of boxing from the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida in the United States of America. Glad that you're with us. The principal is Antonio Sarmeno in the multicolored trunks to the left of your screen and to the right of your screen, Yoder Ortega. Now to the left of your screen in the white trunks. He's from Tormero in Venezuela. Ceremonio is from Miranda in Venezuela. This isn't what you would call by any stretch of the imagination a real crowd pleaser. It's a kind of a chess match between Ortega trying to get inside and land some body blows on this guy and Ceremonio whose corner has told him to fight this guy outside. And I pointed out there a round or so ago that in rounds two and five the outside boxing style for Ceremonio really not effective because those two rounds that he did that I gave to Ortega he continued to do it in the six and I thought that, that round was just about even although Semino is probably landing more blows out here the referee doesn't have too much to do just make sure that those front feet don't get tied up you see again they step on each other and watch for that the front foot of the fellow in the white trunks continually stepping on the fellow with the multicolored shoes and trunks again the feet come together as long as he keeps his left foot outside the right foot of Ortega, everything's okay. You won't have trouble with slipping and tripping. Again, it's Ortega forcing the fight. He's landing body shots here now. Nothing really hurts. Thanks, sneaky right hand that time by Semenyo. But Semenyo, the book on him is uh, exact because while he's got mobility and a busy style, he really does lack the one-punch power that can be necessary in, at this weight classification. If you can really get off with a solid blow, there's only one solid blow in the entire fight, and we showed you the replay of that one. That was a pretty good right hand that time by Ortega. And he's got to throw more of those. Instead, he goes headhunting with the left. Ortega misses with a light right hand. And he threw more right hands. You see, he has a tendency to paw. And when you paw when you're a southpaw with the right hand, you're wide open for a shot from the orthodox fighter. You've got to throw it and step up into it. And he digs behind the elbow, back to the ear. Semenyo doesn't want to fight inside here too much, as this is when Ortega's more effective. See him using the shoulder. And again, every time he pauses with that right hand, Ortega gets clipped. Now Semenyo lands the right hand, wild with the right hand that time. Back with the left, the uppercut with the right hand. Good, nice finish uh, to the round by the champ. Ortega forced the round, though, I'll guarantee you that. Come in, 
You see, right forward with the shoulder, light left hand inside, bang, back behind the hand, nothing clean. Tied up a bit to the head bunch. It's a tough fight. Tough fight for the guys in there. Again, the way they kitty pack when they throw their punches, it's not a, a classic fight for fans, but it's a good strategic chess match for the fighters. Let's see if this, the eighth round, is any different. This is scheduled for 12. It's the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. That's the 122-pound division. Antonio Cermeno in the multicolored trunks to the left of your screen, to the right in the white trunks, Gilbert Ortega. Need to fight it down, need to fight it visibly shaken. Nobody hurt. One heavy blow back two or three rounds ago. That was landed by Cermeno, but it didn't stagger or hurt uh, Ortega in any way. Ortega has forced the fight throughout. I have slightly out in front, Cermeno. But this is still anybody's fight. The champ's idea is to outbox the challenger. The challenger's idea is to come forward, get inside, and try to hurt the champion. But the way these guys throw punches, neither, neither fighter really, I don't know unless we get a couple of clean blows in, it possesses the punching power to take the other one to the canvas. Nice shot, landed by Ortega that time. Three punch combination. And the champ now gets back outside where he wants the fight. Throws that left hand in there and then crosses with the right, which is what he has to do. But you notice when he throws his right hand, he keeps his right foot back and he doesn't move the hip into it. So there's no power there. Everything is kind of thrown across and no power. You gotta step into a punch. When you throw the jab, you gotta push off the hind foot and get it out there, the left out there. And then when you come back with the right hand, you want your hips to roll into it. And otherwise you won't have any power. And while this guy is a world champion, they could certainly work on his car by teaching him more technique. Jimmy Lennon teaches great technique in his box aerobics, and uh, oftentimes some of the women that buy his tape, I think, can throw punches out of what these guys are doing, because a lot of the professional boxing technique comes from that. Uppercuts again. But notice when either one of the fighters throws a jab, they're not springing off the hind foot and stepping into it. So there's no power with the jab. See that powering jab? That does nothing. Semino can come right through that jab. And he is. He just All he does is hook his left hand over and push it down and throws his right. Has a nice uppercut that time. He has more power there because his hip is back and his right leg is back. So when he comes to the uppercut, he actually shows pretty good power there. Inside of 20 seconds to go now in the eighth round. Both guys landing some pretty good shots in this round. Semenyo probably the cleaner shots. States of America. I'm Bob Sheridan. You're watching King Vision. This is the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World, 122 pound class. Antonio Cermeno in the blue trunks with his back to you now, shifting around to the left of your screen. In the white trunks is Jobert Ortega. Well, Cermeno fought really impressively in his first title defense. This is his second one. He had a points win over that perennial contender, Jesus Salud. And in that fight, he had to rally in the second half to outwork Salute, and that's what he's trying to do here against Jobert Ortega. 
I'll tell you, you know, is ranked first by the WBA. Also, his first fight outside of Venezuela. His one loss was to Nelson Medina in 93, and that one was a close decision. He's a presently holding the WBA Latin 122-pound title. He's an aggressive fighter, but he's really taking a real jump up in class here. And fighting the champ, and he's a worthy opponent. There's no question about it. He's made the fight quite a bit. A pretty good left hook in there that time by the champion. Champion digs to the body as Ortega comes in on him. You know, I pointed out earlier in the fight that uh, Semenyo would probably do better if he fought out here and used his boxing skills, but believe it or not, he's doing a better job counterpunching the shorter Ortega when he comes in. Semenyo is an inch taller, he's a quarter pound heavier, and three years younger than Ortega, but he has a five-inch reach advantage. 72 to 67, that's a big difference. Ortega continues to make the fight, but see how lazy he is when he throws the right hand? That's typical of a lot of inexperienced southpaws. This guy's not an inexperienced fighter. He digs pretty good with the left hand like most southpaws do, but his right hand is totally ineffective. He doesn't throw with any authority. His jab is totally ineffective. Semenyo has been able to come right through it. And even though the crowd likes this a bit more because Ortega's throwing more punches, Semenya's doing an outstanding job of countering him. You see him in that counter right hand? See Ortega making it? His left hand looks a little tight, and his right hand is non-existent. Semenya nails him again. Two late right hands by him. And that's the power hand for the southpaw. Now all he's going to do, push him off, step back, throw the left hook, and nail him with the right hand. And he might be able to get this guy to go. Instead, he comes with a left uppercut just underneath the uh, area of the rib cage. That hurts, folks. I don't care what kind of condition you're in. That hurts. Good feigning by both fighters. Closing seconds now. This is the ninth round. And a good round for both fighters, but I think some of you want it. scheduled WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World for the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida. The principal, Antonio Cermeño against Yobia Ortega. Countrymen from Venezuela, both fighters fighting their first time in the United States of America. I've got Cermeño in a pretty close fight for winning the last three rounds, 7, 8, and 9, to uh, move out in front in the fight, 88, 84, on my scorecard, but of course that's unofficial. The official scoring will be done by Paul Thurman of the United States, actually he's from Miami, Guy Drutras from uh, Quebec in Montreal, Canada, and Marco Torres of Panama. Cermeño in the multicolored trunks of the colors of the flag of Venezuela. And Ortega's a patriot too because he has two flags of Venezuela on the sides of his trunks. In the white trunks to the left is Ortega Cermeño with his back to you. And again, the corner of uh, Semenyo has said, hey, stay back outside, just keep boxing. And in spite of that, it's when Ortega gets inside that he does a nice job of countering. The reason why he's so successful countering is because of the lazy right-hand jab of Ortega. See the way he lays it out there? He lays it out so it's only coming from one side. He doesn't even have to really protect his left side. I just blast away with left hooks about him, and he'll hurt this guy. But he, it's not going to happen. He's going to continue to fight the way his corner is telling him, and it's uh, successful because I've got Semenyo out in front in this fight. 
Ortega having a better round 10 than he had 7, 8, and 9. But whether it would be enough to win on the judges' scorecards is questionable. You see, he ducks ahead. He throws a lazy right hand. Southpaw, lazy again. Looping comes with an uppercut that bounces the head back of Zemanio. Digging back with the left hand. And Zemanio just really, surprisingly, is so much more effective when he allows Ortega to come in and then counters him. Not a good idea to sit on the ropes. He feints to, to his left and then back to his right and kind of sits there again. This is where he wants to fight Semenyo, uh, rather Ortega inside. It's definitely where Ortega wants to be. You see, Semenyo takes that step back, he hops back and throws. The other guy continues to throw punches, but they're those pity pat type punches that don't hurt, especially his right hand. He still has power, and he can still damage a guy with a left hand, but it's Semenyo that has more power at this stage of the fight. See, Semenyo can resort to that jab, hold him off a bit when he wants to. Digs underneath the armpit, bangs him with a left hook. Challenger comes in, continuing to throw the right hand, but ineffective. See, that time he gets sneaky with the right hand. He throws one, puts it up on top of his shoulder, throws it again. Digging shot by Semenyo. Belen's round 10. Good run. Championship of the world, the 122-pound class, Antonio Cermeño from Venezuela in the multicolored trunks. And that was a slip, as you saw Ortega's foot go back against Robert Ortega. Cermeño coming in, 23 and 1, 15 KOs. Ortega, 21 and 1 and 1, 14 KOs. Two fellows from Venezuela, the south far is Ortega. And I have Cermeño slightly out in front in this fight, 97-94. Been a lot of close rounds. And it's been a tough fight for both fighters. It's been the type of fight where Ortega has wanted to fight inside, and Semenyo has been more effective when it's been inside, but his corner wants him to fight outside. Let's see how they go here in round 11. Either guy could still win this fight, but it seems that at this stage, Semenyo is stronger. Both guys almost on cruise control. Again, Ortega slips, and there's a lot of paint on the canvas here where the Miller logo is, and the fighters with their shoes very wet right now are slipping on that when they get out in that painted area. The referee has stood back because with the southpaw in Ortega fighting the orthodox fighter in San Nino, their front feet have been getting tied up, and he wants to be sure that he doesn't call a knockdown when it's truly a slip or, in fact, a trip in this case. Neither fighter has been down, neither fighter visibly shaken, and pretty good action right now. Both guys showing that they want it. All great champions possess it, and that's hot. And Semenyo is trying to prove that he wants it more, and Ortega wants no part of it. Ortega just keeps throwing punches himself. He's shown times in the fight of uh, great aggressiveness, but Semenyo with just slightly more boxing ability, and it's been a pretty tough fight for the fighters. There have been rounds that have been exciting. There have been rounds that haven't been exciting. This is one of the better rounds in the fight. This is round 11 of a scheduled 12-round affair. And the way things are going, every indication would point towards it going the full 12 rounds. And Semenyo eking out a victory. Again, the judges. Paul Herman of the United States, Guy Jukas of uh, Quebec and Montreal, Canada, and Marco Torres of Panama. They'll be judging the fight if it continues to go in this manner. Round 11 at the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida. Two young Venezuelan fighters fighting for world title here. Semenyo in the multicolored trunks of the flag of Venezuela. 
and Ortega in white trunks with the flag of Venezuela on his trunk. Both guys busy, pretty good right hand slip through that time by Ortega. Didn't seem to take any effect on Semino. In the closing seconds now, this the 11th round. And it's been mostly Semenyo coming on with the exception of the 10th round when Ortega was very successful. This is good action from the tail end of the 11th round with Semenyo doing most of the scoring here. Ortega, you can see, making the fight to look at those uppercuts. All right, we're coming up to the 12th round. Here we go. Bob showing them here at the Miami Arena in Miami, Florida. This is the WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World, 122-pound division. The champ in the multicolored trunks, primarily blue, Antonio Salameno, Gilbert Ortega in the white trunks, trying to lift the title from him. I've got uh, Salameno out in front in the fight, unofficially. Ortega has been coming on. You see them slip as he stepped on his uh, foot. That's common for the southpaw and the right-handed fighter. You see the feet getting tied up. And you'll see them come together uh, as long as, see that again, he steps right on his toe and again. And you see that Semenyo just wants to keep him off in this uh, final round of the fight. Both guys a little bit fatigued, but Semenyo up on his toes. And then a pretty good sneaky right hand that time. He's confident that he's got this fight won. And he wouldn't want to get too cocky with a guy like Ortega who put pressure on him throughout the fight. His corner wants him to stay off, use the long reach, use your height advantage. Good foot movement, and he's done that throughout the fight. Surprisingly, though, as we pointed out a couple of times, Ortega, when they actually come in, Semenyo has done such a nice job of counter-punching that he's been more effective than he, when he boxes him outside here. The reason for that is, is that there's no power behind the punches of Semenyo, so when he throws his left jab, follows with the right hand, Ortega's showing a lot of bob, bob, bob head movement, and he's not getting a clean shot on him. Neither fighter has been down, neither fighter visibly shaken throughout the course of the fight. And both guys trying to finish strong here. Both possess that immeasurable quality, and that's the heart of a champion. One guy we know has it because he is a world champion. Ortega, ranked number one, may have bitten off just a little bit more than he can chew here. And Antonio Sermino, but you'll see him back in the title fight again. Again, the front feet getting tied up every time that Ortega comes forward. Referee has done a nice job staying back away from the action so he can evaluate again whether it's a slip or actually a knockdown. It hasn't been a factor so far in the fight. Ortega continues to come forward and Semenyo continues to try and counterpunch. He bangs to the body, Ortega to the head. Semenyo back downstairs. It's been a clean fight and a tough fight for both fighters. Both guys throwing more leather now in the final round than they threw in perhaps any round in the fight. Pretty good action in the 11th round but they seem to have got a second win here in the 12th, and they're both working extremely hard. In that area where Ortega's been slipping around on the canvas, on the new paint that's on the canvas here, nice straight light, and the left hand comes through. Doesn't hurt Semenyo, but Semenyo felt it all right. You saw the water spray off his head when he got hit by it, and Semenyo just bores forward, and so does Ortega. And this is the way that Ortega's wanted to fight in the closing seconds of the fight now. Both guys finishing and trying to finish strong. I think Ortega probably won the 12th, but it's too much and too little, I should say. Too late as the bell ends the fight. Well, as I take a look down on my scorecard now, I have scored 117-112 in favor of the champion Antonio Sermeno, but we'll have to wait for the judge's decision, which Jimmy Lennon Jr. will have as soon as he gets the scorecards and then tabulated by the World Boxing Association officials here. Al Goodman, the official here. 
Excellent job here in Miami by the officials. Don Hazelton. Always does a terrific job. As does Shelly Bradshaw. So it was that sort of fight where contrasting styles, a take of the guy coming forward all the time. Antonio Sarmino dictated the pace and the flow of the fight. He let him come in when he wanted to. He counterpunched him inside. He did a real nice job. But I thought that while the fight was practically dead even through six, that Semenyo did more of the scoring in the second half of the fight and should go on to win a unanimous decision. I thought he clearly won the fight. But stranger things have happened in stranger places than Miami. So we'll wait for the decision of the judges. And Jimmy Lennon Jr. is going through the procedure of collecting the scorecards as the tape comes off the hands of Yober Ortega, the pride of Romero, Venezuela. And he put up a good fight. the champion over there and if my scorecard is correct he will have retained his title tonight and that will become his second title defense so good hard fight for him he won the title from Wilfredo Vasquez in May of 95 and defended it in November against Jesus Salud and I believe he's defended his title against Jobert Ortega for second title defense and now I see Jimmy Lennon, uh, as you see the Don King blimp is ready. And Jimmy seems to be set. So without further ado, once we get his attention, we'll go to ring announcer to Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Guy Jutra scores about 115-114. Marco Torres scores at 116-115. Paul Herman sees them out at 116-112. to 112. All three in favor of the winner and still champion, Antonio Cermeño. Thank you. 